course, the fellow who you see here is a, a fellow you all know, Thomas Alva Edison, right? So Tesla actually got a recommendation from one of his uh, workers, uh, co-workers in uh, Paris, and recommendation uh, read as follows. It said, uh, the recommendation was written directly to Edison because this fellow knew Edison, and he said, I know two great men of science in this world today. You are one of them, and this man carrying this letter is the other. So Tesla came with a, that was reported with a very little money and came uh, uh, across, and of course, uh, with that letter, he got immediately a job at Edison uh, Electric Company. He started working there, and of course, his uh, inventive genius immediately showed up, and on several occasions, he was able to repair some damage which was done to the DC generating stations, and um, that, uh, of course, uh, Edison uh, pushed very hard, and in fact, was uh, already a very famous inventor at the time. And uh, there was one accident, uh, and uh, the whole uh, set of the generators went off, and they didn't know how to fix it, and they called Tesla, and uh, of course Edison called him in, and he said, well, we've got to get that done quickly, and uh, if he can uh, do it, he's going to give him uh, $20,000. Tesla went there and worked uh, about three, four solid days. He was very well known to, to be working uh, basically around the clock, not taking the breaks or sleeping two hours and then continuing on his work. And after three days or four days, he came back and uh, reported that he finished the job and he wanted his reward. And Edison, uh, uh, it was reported, uh, said, well, you don't understand uh, Americans' uh, practical jokes. So, <laughs> well, at that point, uh, Tesla was a very proud man. And at that point, he decided to quit. In fact, he quit right on the spot. And in fact, it is well known that for a year, he couldn't get a job anyplace else. And he worked uh, digging the ditches for about a year. Imagine the fellow who had all these tremendous ideas and not e being able to implement it because he lacked uh, financial resources. And lucky enough, uh, then uh, he found some uh, backers. In fact, one of the first backers was J.P. Morgan, one of the very uh, rich people at the time, bankers. And in fact, there is, I think, a bank even nowadays called the uh, Morgan Trust or something. In any case, uh, these backers started him, and he started Tesla Electric uh, Company. Here is Tesla at the time when he came to the United States. This is a picture I like the most and I use very often in our course brochure literature, so you'll get some uh, later on. Here is uh, his first laboratory in this electric lighting company that he started. He made some experiments and made the first motors, and it was in 1884 that he came, and by 1887 he filed some 30 or 40 patents setting up the whole electrical system as we know it today. Not only the, he invented the polyphase system of uh, generation of the currents, two-phase and three-phase systems. He invented the induction motor, of course. He invented synchronous motor. And basically, all the principles that he set out and all the practical solutions we came up with is basically almost unchanged, utilized today. And as, as a matter of fact, when you look at it, uh, I often uh, like to say that both uh, General Electric and Westinghouse really were made on Tesla patents. And it's very true. Here's uh, Mark Twain, you may not, you may recognize him. He was uh, one of the famous, uh, of course, writers at the time, and he was a very good friend of Tesla, and very often he would stop by in his laboratory and be uh, sort of entertained by some of the experiments, that, especially high frequency experiments Tesla was making. This fellow is the lead at Forrest. He was, uh, for a short period of time, about a year or less, uh, Tesla's uh, assistant. And of course, uh, Lida Forrest later went on to become inventor in his own right, inventing the vacuum uh, diode, and in fact later triode, and uh, that's where the electronic cage started, actually. Predecessor of television. This, of course, is uh, George Westinghouse. And in fact, uh, George Westinghouse was the first one to realize the advantages of the AC systems that Tesla was proposing. And he approached him, as soon as uh, his patents were filed, to buy out the patent rights. And Tesla concluded the agreement with Edison for um, what was reported then uh, upfront royalty, upfront license fee of uh, $1 million and uh, license uh, uh, royalty rate of uh, $1 per horsepower. Of course, uh, you can think of that. That was 1888. And $1 million went a long way <laughs> <laughs> then. So what happened is uh, then there was a so-called, uh, if you heard about it, uh, war of currents. 
Edison already invested in his ele electric light company a lot of money, and he was not about to give in. So he was pushing the DC transmission system, whereas Tesla and Westinghouse were backing the AC transmission system. However, what happened is uh, Edison Electric Company was much stronger at the time, and Westinghouse Company was just uh, emerging, and it could not stand the competition. So stockholders of a Westinghouse Electric Company approached Westinghouse and said, we cannot live with this agreement. It's got to be changed. We cannot actually put it in practice. They approached Tesla. In fact, Westinghouse approached Tesla. And Tesla then, this, is, this showed the, the man who was uh, basically very unselfish. And he, all, what he was interested in to see his inventions and his results being implemented for the good of the you know, humanity. So what he decided then is he tore up the license agreement, which uh, was giving him one uh, dollar per horsepower. And by doing so, it was said that in those days, he tore up about $10 million worth, which was because there was a, such a tremendous change that in, uh, within uh, just a few years, there were megawatts of power being installed, and he would just on a uh, receive that much money. What happened with the first uh, million dollars that he was supposed to get up front, no one knows. Actually, there is no uh, trace of the original document, and uh, any attempts to search and go through Westinghouse files to find out whether that was ever paid or not uh, were not successful. So it's not known whether he actually ever received that, that part of money either. So it was really support of uh, J.P. Morgan with some $100,000 or so which, which got him started. Well, here's Tesla in his laboratory also at a later time. This is uh, after he successfully came up with the polyphase system and uh, induction motor and all of that, he, sent, uh, he lost, not lost interest, he lost interest in commercializing that. He went into the other bigger things which were waiting. And one of the ideas that he was toying is, uh, of course, uh, radio transmission and uh, eventually the power transmission without wires. Here in Colorado Springs, he erected this building where it's uh, like a radio station where he was trying to essentially transmit the signals, but also later on, as you'll see, he was trying to transmit the power without wires. And of course, that's where a Tesla coil came up.